Greetings and welcome one and all to this service of worship of the congregations of St. Paul's and Central Sandwich United Church together in this month of August. I want to welcome everyone here in person and everyone also who will be joining us later <coughs> online. Fortunately, last week, apologize to folks, um, we, we had a bit of a glitch, but I think we're in order now, and, and so I do welcome those folks who will be taking part later watching the recording. After the service, there will be a time of gathering for fellowship and refreshments. And I, last week, it was such an incredible spread, and I thought, wow, do they do this every week? Wow, we're missing out. But then I found out it was part of a, a, a celebration, I guess, the day before, and these were the things that were left for our enjoyment. So, so I expect it to be a little lesser uh, involved. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> I would encourage uh, you, both congregations, to mingle when we get together. Uh, I noticed last week, and it's very human to do this, as folks kind of gathered with those they are familiar with, but part of the purpose of being together here is, is to get to know one another a little bit better. And so I would really encourage you to kind of step beyond your boundaries and sit with folks you don't know or don't know very well. And we'll mingle, we'll get the two congregations together. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. <laughs> For this month, um, I'm reintroducing, of course, something in worship that often United Churches have been doing uh, in, in recent times, and uh, that's the passing of the peace. And I think it's appropriate because the two congregations are together, but because of the fact the pandemic is still around, no touching, no hugging, no getting too close. But I'm going to suggest you turn to your immediate neighbor, at least, and use a gesture. It could be, as I mentioned last week, this, or it could be this, and wish the peace of Christ to your neighbor. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Or a photo, 
And if you uh, if you're saddened, uh, as we all are when our pets die, uh, feel free to bring a photo. We will have a moment of remembrance. On that note, I ask you for prayers for my daughter Kelly. Her she had to put her beloved dog down um, uh, two days ago, um, or yesterday actually. Yesterday, um, she has had that dog for over half her life, and she is uh, 35. Yeah, it's a hard thing. So bring a photo if you like. Yes, Lisa. Hi, Paul. Um, can I just announce, in preparation for next week, we have made up some posters. Now, I've been scurrying around Sydney, putting them up in <laughs> Saanichton, but I don't know every place in Sydney. There's a, about a dozen here if you live in a building or live by a community center and would like to put one up. Please, I'll just leave them here. Can I leave them here on the table for folks to just come and collect? At the end of the service and take one with you and invite your friends that's the most direct method and it works best thanks so much and can i just ask is it going to be in the hall yes that's so what i understand okay. there is a yeah. yeah that's where yeah okay. yeah i think we're in competition with saint mary's Anglican church because i learned that they're having their blessing of the animal service next week at 1 30. and saint stephen's is as well yeah the two of them together and uh, so Reverend Lawn, the priest there, said that I guess every animal on the peninsula has a chance to be blessed. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so now, are there any other uh, announcements or celebrations to share with one another? Birthdays, anniversaries. She's got to be something. I have a daughter who's 67 on Tuesday. Bill has a daughter who's 67 on Tuesday. Any other birthdays? Bruce turned 60 something. <laughs> 61 on Thursday. Who? Bruce. Oh, Bruce. <laughs> well, shall we sing for happy birthday first? Yes. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday.
thanks for mentioning that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> She'll straighten you out. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> We carry our Christ candle with us as we live our daily lives. We carry it, carry it, acknowledging our gifts and our limitations. We carry it into our shadows. We carry it as we live into the pathway of discipleship to which we are called. This light comes to us as grace, promise, hope, and full life, a strength and power for today and tomorrow. Thanks be to God. And our opening hymn is from Voices United 374, Come and Find the Quiet Center.
silence, we experience God's presence within us. <coughs> closer than breathing. Closer than thinking. Closer than consciousness. Let us encounter the God within in a moment of quiet. was 
made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received the power of procreation, even though he and Sarah were too old, because he considered God faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, God has prepared a city for them. So far. <coughs> we continue with the gospel. to know that truth. 
the truth behind nature and the moral understanding planted deep within the human heart. We call this truth the Word of God, the Christ, Jesus, the human incarnation of God, our brother, our sister, the wisdom teacher, the way of compassion, justice, forgiveness, and peace. We seek the source, the giver of life, of understanding, of strength in virtue. We call this source the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind and the fire, the spirit of imagination. As in vision now we see the power, the truth, the source in one unending dance, three in one, one in three, one God of abundance, wisdom, compassion. Our human hearts are made to yearn for a relationship with God. We embrace this yearning and call it faith. And our faith is this, the good news for 2,000 years. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, as God is in them. Here in the readings from Scripture and the words from the world around us, with these insights, we give thanks to God and our praise. Amen. Similar experiences of this 
in-betweenness, experiences of loss and hope, exile and belonging. Directed by God, Abraham gazes at the night sky, trying to in vain to imagine living in a new land and having descendants as numerous as the stars. The writer of Hebrews acknowledges that the heroes and heroines of faith confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, seeking a homeland even as they toiled in exile, desiring a better country, a heavenly one. And through the Gospel writer, Jesus describes faithful servants who wait for their beloved master through the long watches of the night, hopeful that he will return home and reward their diligence. Each of these readings describes the lives of the faithful. Each explores what faith looks and feels like in the world we actually live in. Faith, as it says, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Okay, I must admit that while helpful, these examples of faith still don't do it for me. I still find myself asking, what is faith? At its core, what is faith? You know, growing up, I was taught that faith was a matter of creeds and doctrines, a matter of intellectual assent to these statements of belief and teachings of the church to accept Jesus into my heart, to be born again, to use more evangelical language. This was to affirm a set of claims about who Jesus is and what is accomplished through his life, and for many, even more importantly, through his death and resurrection. To enter into orthodox faith was to agree that certain theological statements about God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the human condition, the Bible, and the Church were true. Traditionally, when Christians spoke of growing in the faith, what they meant was that they were honing their doctrinal commitments, making sure they had their theological ducks all in a row. For me, this way of believing, this way of defining faith as an intellectual assent to precisely codified doctrines has slowly but surely fallen apart. Not because I can't assent, for sure, doctrines and creeds have provided me with guides and ideas, and even ideals for Christian faith and life. However, such intellectual assent in and of itself has not fostered anything close to the meaningful relationship I desire to have with God. If anything, such intellectual assent can be a real smokescreen, a distraction, and a poor substitute for the real thing. So again, what is the real thing? What is faith? The scripture readings for today would affirm a definition of faith that Debbie's immigrant parents would understand. The texts describe the faithful as people who set out for new places, anticipate new arrivals, wait for big changes, and search for new homeland. In these passages of scripture, the faithful are nomads. They wander, and they contend with a holy restlessness. They straddle a hyphen. They work for the transformation of this world as they yearn with all their hearts for another. Faith, as it is described in Scripture, is not, in other words, a destination. It's not a conclusion or a form of closure. Faith is longing. Faith is a hunger. Faith is a desire. According to Abraham's story, faith is the restless energy that pushes us out the door, onto the road, in pursuit of the inheritance God has promised. Faith is the audacity to undertake a perilous journey, simply because God draws us to that journey, not because we know ahead of time where we're going. Faith is the itch and the ache that turns our faces toward the distant stars, even on the cloudiest of nights. Faith is the willingness to stretch our imaginations and see new birth, new life, new joy, new adventure, even when we feel withered and dead inside. Faith is learning and coming to know that home, our true home, is our connection with God, 
in our sense of our connectedness to the divine, in our sense of the interconnectedness of one another and all creation. Because God, the divine, the spirit, is in all things, including us. Contemporary scholars like Marcus Borg and Harvey Cox declare that faith is not about believing. Indeed, Borg has taught that a better translation of the verb we translate as to believe is to be loved. To be loved. Harvey Cox argues that faith is more closely related to awe and love and wonder. I have to agree. During my summer vacation this year, I spent a considerable amount of time in nature, traveling along amazing trails, first on Saturna Island and then on Salt Spring Island. I was filled with that awe, love, and wonder of which Harvey Cox speaks. Just being mindful of all creation around me, aware of the interconnectedness of all, trusting in the goodness of the life force present there, call it God, spirit, the divine, whatever. Just basking in the experience of a moment, the experience made even more precious, shared with a dear friend. That is faith. At its core, that is faith. As the reading from Hebrew declares, faith is feeling at home, truly being at home. The true and lasting home, whose architect and builder is God. For fleeting moments in my walks along forest trails or standing on high ridges over ocean vistas, I was at home. In the very heart, the mystery, the beauty of life. The mystery and the beauty of God. Through such experiences, I find I can relate to the writer of Hebrews declaring that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Our gospel lesson tells us something of faith, more particularly Christian faith. Faith is a posture of active, engaged alertness, as suggested in Jesus' parable of the diligent servants from Luke's Gospel. It is the rightly aligned heart, the dressed for action body, the lit lamp on a dark night. It is the patient ability to wait on a presence that has not yet arrived, a promise that has not yet been fulfilled. It is an overwhelming desire to welcome, serve, and embrace Jesus wherever and however he makes an appearance. It is the daily business of living on our tiptoes, our eyes on the door, our hands ready at the doorknob for the master's joy-filled arrival. You know, the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is complacency, apathy, resignation, and cynicism. The opposite of faith is falling asleep. It's pie in the sky, a disengaged acceptance of the status quo, a refusal to embrace holy restlessness as an incentive to work for a more just and loving world here and now. It's holding back and holding still when the call of God on our lives is to move. Theologian John Shelley writes, faith is a multifaceted reality with strange, even paradoxical features. It is at once the gift of God's unconditional love and a human response of trust and gratitude that issues in deeds of love and justice. Faith is a way of knowing. Well, I do hope you found this appetizer I have provided for you within the banquet of faith a tasty one and not distasteful. And I hope it will be nourishing for you and not give you a bellyache. I pray it will whet your appetite to feast further on matters of faith and faithfulness. Let me give the final word of this brief exploration of the meaning of faith to Debbie Thomas again in her immigrant experience. As a child of immigrants, she writes, Living in a cultural moment when immigrants are facing unspeakable hatred, contempt in the United States where I live, I am particularly grateful that God loves the traveler, the wanderer, the foreigner, the exile. I love that those who embrace in-betweenness 
and serve as vital living metaphors for the life of faith, contemporary parables for the church's growth and edification. And I love that the holy restlessness we feel as people of faith comes from God's restless love and desire for us. The home we strain towards is the same home God is preparing for us right now because it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And all we have to do is journey towards it. All we have to do is welcome it by faith. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn of response to today's message is from More Voices, number 82. Bathe me in your light. Um, I understand from rehearsing with our singers that this may be new to some of you, so I'll play it through one time before we sing it.
Hearing God, as you receive the offering of our resources, the offering of ourselves, remind us how to share your love with the world. Make us aware of the opportunities to be angels in the lives of others. Inspire us to seek the needs of our community and to act, that we might lessen the struggle and challenges for each other. Encourage us to use the ways you've blessed our lives, that we might be a blessing for others.
situations or places in our hearts this day. Loving God, hear our prayers. Faithful God, we depend on you. Be gracious and bless us so that our lives may be a blessing to others. Together we pray the words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 